<laughs> underpants. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Mac Show. I'm Jeff Gamet, your uh, Ewan Rankin impersonator. Uh, Ewan is locked in the mobile command center, and once he learns his lesson, we'll let him back out. Um, uh, actually, he he's busy today, and um, uh, he'll be back with us next week. So, uh, uh, Ewan, we miss you, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing you next week. And we have uh, uh, an awesome panel here. Uh, we'll just do like I seem to be doing quite regularly now and just kind of go clockwise from my perspective. Patrice, oh, wait, Patrice. Uh, I'll, I'll introduce you and then I'll go down my little rabbit hole. Patrice, how are you today? <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing really well today. Um, short day at work, uh, stressful week, but, uh, like we had our big, big quarterly planning meeting on Wednesday. So you can imagine there was a lot of work going into that and then like finishing it. But now we have until October to, to actually execute it. So <laughs> that's, that's oh, the fun But no, but I'm, I'm, I'm good. I mean, I had like, I said this distress got to me a little bit beginning of the week, but today is Friday, so good day. Yeah, so it's a good day. Awesome, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, my my uh, little rabbit hole. I said I'll go clockwise, and uh, and after I said that, I realized there's a percentage of the population that doesn't understand what that really means. Oh yeah, <laughs> I mean. I don't remember when was the last time I've even seen like a like a traditional clock face. That's been a while. Yeah. Well, I mean, there are still people that have them. Like I, I know that, but I, 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 I actually it. have one in my kitchen. <laughs> nice. Oh yeah, the train stations here have them. Now that ah. you mention it, I'm like, oh yeah, the train stations here still have them. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, they have those like Swiss clocks, the old ones. Nice. They still have them. <laughs> so the train stations near you and mm -hmm. my kitchen, that's where we can find the anachronism that is uh, analog clock face. Yes, exactly. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dave, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, thanks for being on the show last night. Uh, it's going to get published today and uh, we had a lot of fun. And it's been a long week. I'm back to work since I've been off the back the week before. So. But uh, glad to be here today. Awesome. Well, it's, it's great to see you. you. Um, Chuck, how are you doing? I'm great, Jeff. I'm great, Jeff. But speaking of anachronisms, uh, a friend of mine went on vacation, took their daughter with them to a place that was a little, you know, rustic and all. And they had a significant problem with uh, a utility and they had to call the caretaker and they sent their daughter to make the phone call and they had a, a rotary dial phone on the wall. Wow. She did not know how to use it. No. <laughs> she did oh, not know how great. to, which, which <laughs> you know, it's, it just shows you, you know, how, how far back some of us go, unfortunately. Oh my gosh. Can't believe it I, still works. I, I yeah. saw a, a YouTube video. It was going around uh, several months ago where these parents set up a, uh, uh, a rotary phone and asked their teenage kids to make a phone call <laughs> and gave them no instructions, just here's the phone, make a call. And, uh, <laughs> and th they couldn't figure it out. And it was fascinating to watch the video because, uh, you know, they're, they're trying to, uh, to, like make numbers happen on it, but no, they're not actually picking up the handset. And uh, and at one point they pick it up and uh, and they hear a dial tone and they're like, uh, I don't know if it's working or if I've got an error because it's making a sound. And yeah, you know the yeah. only time I've ever used a rotary, I mean used an air quotes rotary phone was as a toy as a kid. My, my grandparents still had one. It wasn't connected to anything. I think it was their, literally their old rotary dial phone, but it wasn't connected to anything. But I remember as a kid like playing with it, pretending it was a phone. Like, or the Fisher-Price. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Fisher Price. They taught us all about uh, mobile phones because there's a little cord so you could yeah. pull it around behind you. Yeah, I was going to say, you could pull around with the wheels. <laughs> uh, no, that was well, literally the... like it had the cables still and everything. It was a like the actual phone. It just wasn't connected anymore. Yeah. That well, the punchline. Like the 80s or something. <laughs> yeah. Well, the punchline to my story is that the daughter that didn't know how to use it just turned 30. Wow. <laughs> so she would have passed the disposal when she was younger. Well, you would have, you would have thought so, but you know, okay. you start doing the math, and not necessarily. Oh, yeah. well, you know, so she was 80s? probably exposed to push button phones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly, yep. exactly. That was what I remember. I'm not that much older, so. Now, I I do remember <laughs> that. Of course, we called them touch tone phones. Um, the princess I, phones too. Uh, the princess phones. Ooh, yeah, the princess they had phones, the little yeah. s- switch on them so that you could uh, you could switch them between tone and pulse styling so that mm-hmm. they they would uh, simulate a rotary phone for the systems that still required that. Oh, do you know that uh, even modern day desk phones still can do that? Like especially the business ones, they still have an option where you can switch over. Plus their IPT. Really? Hmm. Wow. An IPT? Mm -hmm. Wow. And uh, at um, Bob Beach in the chat room saying, has the show started? (laughs) Well, yes. Uh, (laughs) Yes and no. uh, This week in in antiquated uh, uh, phone phone technology, yes, we're well on the way. And, uh, And... Somehow, Ewan still lets me host the show. When he's, you know, well, that I one was my fault, Jeff. Like this, no, that was my fault, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, but we'll I ran that. with it. Yeah, well, we all. But did, I so. set you up because uh, because uh, I, I started it off with with talking about clockwise. So I set us up for uh, for old tech. Yeah. And I, but I do stuff like this all the time, and you was like, bring... oh, whatever, I'll let him come back and host again, anyhow. <laughs> Who's going to bring the punch cards? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, next week, this week at Apple, punch cards. <laughs> and and the week after that, the the, the chisel with this, you know, the stone yeah. tablets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that right. works. That works. Um, yeah, and uh, and then the special episode will show people how to make papyrus paper. <laughs> oh. That's nice. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Absolutely mm-hmm. awesome. Um, yeah. Uh, actually, I do remember, as long as we're not actually talking about what we're supposed to talk about. <laughs> yeah. uh, like, uh, I, I, I remember the, the first computer that I got to play with, like, you know, like go hands on and like really do something with was the, uh, the Commodore PET. 2001 and still has a special place in my heart because I was the first <laughs> and that was the upgraded model that had a cassette tape recorder in it yep. and uh and I and I remember the uh because it the computer was in the math department because back then that's where computers were supposed to be and uh so it was back in the teacher's lounge. And uh, one day teacher took me back into the lounge and said, you need to see this. And uh, then I had a special pass so I could go in and, uh, and play on the computer. And uh, one of the first things that, that he said was on your cassette tape, you need to note the time markers for all of the the different programs that you write so that you don't have to start from the beginning and just let it mm-hmm. play until it finds your your thing oh my god and yeah. you need to make sure that you know how long it is so that you don't accidentally overwrite part of the tape with a different program oh yeah so yeah uh, yeah you know you know what's interesting um, and, and i only realized that a couple of years ago the German word for data center is Rechenzentrum, which literally just means calculation center. And that's because, yeah, I mean, it, that's where you went with your punch cards or whatever to have them calculate something. So it's like yep. German language, very, very literal. <laughs> very literal. And, <laughs> uh, and it's like, it's like the, the Lego bricks of language. 
Because you just take pieces and stick them together. Oh, yeah, everything. that's true. Yes, that's very true. <laughs> okay, how yeah. did we end up here? Can we stick Apple together? Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, uh, well, Does your we, iPhone do punch cards? I don't know. You know, there's there's that guy that does videos <laughs> where he takes old uh, storage mediums and connects them to an iPhone to wow. see if Wait. he can use them. And he got a floppy disk to work with it. Wow. So he actually... <laughs> Three and a half or five and, five and a quarter. Um, it was... Um, uh, it was three and a quarter. So the wait, was it three and a half and five and a quarter? Yeah. Yep. Is that right? Yeah. So it was three and a half. Um, although I would love to to know if he's tried it with uh with the the bigger floppies. Yeah. So Maybe. some I'm I'm having this vision of someone deciding to take photos of punch cards and then trying to process those photos mm -hmm. for the the punches. Yeah, you know, but put that put that into a video at so many frames per second, and have it run that way. That would be that would be oh, just yeah. painful. <laughs> but Patrice, I think you're right. You should be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you can scan a QR code mm -hmm. from a technical standpoint, just, that's not yeah. that much different to scan a, a punch card. No, I think it might actually be rather easy because it's a fixed pattern. Like QR codes are much more complicated. Right. Ewan, we're so sorry for what we've done to the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, yesterday, I, I was throughout the show just uh, uh, randomly issuing apologies. Mm hmm. Uh, maybe, maybe I should continue to do that. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Um, I mean, yesterday you'd only started after the introductions, I think. <laughs> Today we started early. <laughs> yeah. Um, All right. Well, you know, uh, we're, we're overachievers. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Well, I guess as long as we're here and um, um, no one has found a punch card scanner app for the iPhone yet. Uh, we might as well talk about something else Apple related. So let's just ju jump right into the to the big OMG story. Um, Apple is uh, uh, including a new feature in iOS 15 and in macOS Monterey that will scan for uh, uh, nude photos to protect kids from seeing inappropriate content. So there's two parts to this. And the first part is uh, if you get, say, a, a, a text message from someone and it includes uh, a dick pic and you are uh, uh, under, thir well, if you're under 17, but under 13, uh, you're there's, well, there's, there's two thresholds. There's the under 13 threshold and the under 17 threshold for for what type of uh of notice mm -hmm. happens for parents um but the 13 that's that's the the key one right there because you get like emojis over the the naughty bits and um and a warning hey you know here's this picture that just came in that's probably inappropriate and then if the kid's like Gee, screw that i'm gonna walk i'm gonna look and uh they do then their parents get a notification um mm -hmm. and um uh, and then from 13 to 17 the parents don't get the notification but the uh the little uh uh don't look at this emoji thing still pops up mm -hmm. on the uh maybe pop up is yeah. the wrong word to use there still covers <laughs> the um covers. the the stuff that uh yeah. It thinks you're not supposed to see. Okay, so that's and, and the Apple, first part. And Apple, I think as well, uh, like it, it informs the kid why, like why this is a problem or why it is yeah. protecting. Right. So it's not just hiding it; it's also giving information about why this was detected. Right. So yeah. So there's a little education going along with it too. Mm -hmm. Then the second part of this is um, uh, photos uh, uploaded to iCloud Photos are going to be scanned for uh, uh, matches for 
um, or against a specific database that has um, um, child uh, abuse and um, uh, uh, great. I just totally forgot the name of the database, but it's a it's like a um, uh, a database that's maintained to uh, to try and track and stop uh, child exploitation images. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, go my ahead. understanding was that that's true for all photos uploaded, not just from children. Yes, okay. that's for all yes. photos yes. that okay. are uploaded, so also not just from kids. Mm -hmm. Yes, they're it's, calling it CSAM, which would be child sexual abuse material is disabled. Well, that, that was the mm -hmm. article that we didn't share, but uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's what that other we we're going to bring that up. But we mm -hmm. only talked about the uh, the actual child protection there. But yeah, they're mm -hmm. they're doing this and this. I, I think there's already about up and a lot of people up in arms with privacy concerns <laughs> on this, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, and but you know what? I uh, bravo to Apple for doing this. Yeah, I mean. What it does is it it checks basically the photos against known hashes. So if what someone shared right. something that was already identified, it doesn't it identify new material. It just it just catches what is already known, and the hashes are built into the system. So it's not an online system where stuff can be added. Uh, Apple would have to, uh, or I'm guessing, will release basically new hashes as as uh, that that uh, database makes them available in a new iOS version or an iOS update. Because, mm -hmm. um, because of course you know people are so dumb they they're just they're going to get this material yeah. from pornography sites Probably. and you know and you yeah. know those 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 uh, photos have tags in them and they have mm -hmm. no clue that that does. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. The <laughs> I think the concern here is, I mean, this Apple is not the first company to do that. I think in fact Microsoft think is almost, already doing it. Yeah. I think For every every images. cloud storage company is doing it. Like Google, Microsoft, uh, Dropbox, I think they're all doing it already. Um, the concern here is all of them are doing it online. So you upload it to storage, the, the storage provider, whatever it is, Microsoft, doesn't matter. Um, and then they, they scan it and then it get, actually gets flagged. And then in like, let's say worst case, or I would say best case scenario, <laughs> if someone asked that, um, it actually gets forwarded to the authorities. So it's not just that they tell you, oh, you have something you shouldn't have. No, they, they literally inform whatever, the FBI probably in the US. I don't know who's responsible. Um, so the, the, the problem here is what the EFF and, and some others are saying. Yeah, that that's... happens on device. And Apple, and that's a very Apple approach to say, oh, everything happens on device. So it's like, it's private and all of that. Whereas in reality, once you have a system like that on device, you could use it for anything. Right. And, uh, and actually, Apple has already been using this system for years because mm -hmm. they've been using it for uh, uh, face detection so that, so that photos can automatically sort your friends and family for you. And uh, and find trees and pets and and uh, and now granted th that's not the same completely as what Apple is going to be doing now, but that that technology has been there and has been in use in some way, and now we're seeing that scope expanded. And uh, and Patrice, you're right. There's nothing to say that it won't be expanded in the future, mm -hmm. and uh, and there could be uh, you know just taking it. Uh, way out there, there could be government mandates at some point that say uh, uh, all smartphone photos must be monitored for for specific types of content, and uh, and then if that is found, then it has to be turned over to law enforcement. Yeah, and I mean that I think that's the part. I mean, yeah, that the on device scanning was has been in place for a long time. It's the part where you where. The photo actually gets uploaded to Apple and someone reviews it and then it gets forwarded to, uh, to authorities. That is the part. And it might not be a problem in the US, but it's for sure a problem in some other countries that are more like restrictive. Mm -hmm. Like China, for example, or like in the Middle East, there are some countries. 
Uh, so there are a couple they of simply mandate that Apple has to add whatever they don't like. I don't know political things. Where they say you, you can't show, I don't know, the flag of some rebel group or something. I don't know. That's not Star Wars. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there are a couple of different things though here. First of all, I mean, I think this is this is admirable any way you take it, regardless of who is doing it. From the child standpoint, from this, from from another standpoint, this was. This sort of addresses to a small degree, you know, some of the arguments that some of the law enforcement agencies have tried to put forth about wanting a back door, you know, that, well, we want to, this is one of their big arguments. We want to protect the children. We want to protect the children. So now Apple's doing something and others are doing something that are specifically as, as one of the main goals there to help protect children and to, to stop some of this this uh, horrendous behavior. Um, and right away, you know, somebody points out that, well, yeah, there's this other side. And, and I couldn't help but be reminded when I was reading these articles this morning of the debates over the back door, because it seems like kind of the same thing. There are pros and cons to these technologies. And, you know, where do you set your priorities and, and who should who should set the priorities? And how can they be abused? And so the back doors, yes. Would they give law enforcement the opportunity to catch more child predators? Absolutely, no question. But how? what do you give up for that? Here, we have a situation where the, the kids are going to try to be protected and we're going to try kind of another avenue to identify child predators and people that are trafficking in this, this material. But what do you give up for it? So it's I, I, I see these technologies personally as not good nor bad. It's how they're applied. Mm -hmm. And the, the simple thing is that they are a fact of life. And we've got to figure out as society or societies how we're going to use them and what is going to be acceptable and not acceptable from a law enforcement standpoint, from a corporate standpoint, from a corporate liability standpoint. Because you know, if if these if a photo is automatically uploaded to Apple, does that violate my privacy? Because the the scanning thought it was something questionable, and it's therefore sharing it automatically with Apple to review. I, I mean, I I don't think that I like that idea that if I take a picture of something and the the algorithm interprets it incorrectly. I can't imagine what that would be, but let's just go with it and say, you know, that goes. And now somebody else is able to see that photo for the sake of law enforcement um, or standards enforcement or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. God, then I, you know, I struggle with that because I, I, I admire and absolutely approve of the objective, but I struggle a little bit with, you know, how it's going to potentially impact me and my privacy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, it's we're on this scale and, and that's the thing. These these articles, depending on who writes them and which side you're quoting, you know, they're, they're painting Apple as good guy, bad guy. The privacy advocate says good guys, bad guys. And I'm not sure there, anybody here is a white hat or a black hat. Uh, in, uh, at least there are some definitely white hats and some black hats, but there's an awful big gray in the middle. Mm hmm. Yeah, um, and, uh, I, I definitely have privacy concerns, and uh, and I'm concerned about the potential for corporate or government abuse of the technology. Um, but on the other side of that, when when I look at what they're doing for the content that that can be sent to you unsolicited, you know, so, someone mm -hmm. sends you uh, 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 an what you deem is an inappropriate image that you did not request. Yeah. Um, I, I like that there's a system that will be in place where parents can help protect their kids. Yeah, um, and, and, sure. the way, and the way that part works is, uh, is it's part of the whole parental controls thing. And uh, you can't turn it on for someone that's over 17 years old. Yeah. So I, actually, actually, I want that kind of to be an option. I think a lot of women would want that, but it's and like you it went hides. right it's, where I'm going something. it just hides. That. <laughs> yep. I mean, it should be available to, to everyone. Uh, mm -hmm. And because my first thought when, when I heard about the feature was, oh, 
wow, <laughs> I know so many women that are going to be so glad that they can turn mm -hmm. this thing on and not have to see all of these dick pics that get sent to them mm -hmm. that they didn't want. And, uh, and it still just amazes me that, that there are people out there that think it's okay to send a photo <laughs> like that without consent. Holy mm -hmm. crap. What is wrong with you? Uh, anyhow, mm -hmm. so not making that an option for everyone to be able to say, Hey, look, I just, I, I want to have this, this, uh, filter thing turned on for the stuff that, that I get. That seems like a, like a big omission for me or for me from Apple, from my perspective. There we go. That was really hard to, to say. Wow. But Jeff, isn't it possible, even probable, that that option will be given later, that right now this is turned on for two reasons. First of all, the obvious stated reason to protect children, but also to test the waters a little bit and see kind of what the reaction is, as if they didn't know what the reaction was going to be. You know, I, I have to wonder if that's not at some point an option that you will be allowed to turn on. And is there an argument? What's the argument against being able to turn it on? What's the argument for me or Patrice or Dave or you to say, I really don't want to see this kind of content? Because we can do that to some degree on social media now, um, not with these kind of photos, but with certain political content. I can tag you know, uh, my, my favorite anti-politician that I never want to hear from or hear about again. Mm -hmm. And I can turn that on and I've got a pretty good chance of avoid avoiding a lot of it, maybe not all of it, but a lot of it. So what's the argument against turning it on? Um, yeah, I, I, I can't come up with a good argument against giving everyone the, the option for turning this on. Um, I, I, I suspect you're right that Apple is starting this as a thing for protecting children because uh, that's probably easier for them to manage and uh, and it's a good way to test how well the feature works before later on uh, if it, if it works the way they want uh, rolling it out so that everyone can use it. Um, yeah, it's. Well, and I, and I, I just one last thing. I love the fact that you pointed out that this is not new technology, that we've had this all this time for identifying trees and boats and cats and dogs and whatever. And, you know, it's sitting there. It's just now they're tuning it to something specific. I have no idea what would have happened if you had tried to ask for, if you had a corpus of, of photos and said breast. I, I, I just don't know. Maybe it would have done just fine by identi and identifying those photos. But, has, and somebody out there probably has tried that and, and, you know, good for you. But, you know, the kind of the point is that this is not new technology. It's just being, it's being identified as a way to do this. And now the pros and cons and the debates are starting. You know what I was also thinking about? The poor developers who have to build this. Because they oh, have to test I hadn't it. thought about that. <laughs> and I'm guessing no. that wasn't a fun job. <laughs> no, I can't imagine. <laughs> no, because at, at some point they have to be looking at uh, a lot mm -hmm. of images, yeah. and uh, and at least some of them mm -hmm. are, are probably not to their liking. Yeah, let's hope not. Yeah, You know, Patrice, something you said there just triggered. Um, there, there, are, there are apps out there. I just had cause to use one, and that's a whole other story we won't go into, um, to identify plants. Mm -hmm. You know, that you can just take a picture of a plant, and this is what kind of plant it is. And, you know, their picture, they're, there's, I think, apps out there, I believe, for birds. I'm sure there are probably apps for a lot of things. This is the very same technology. It's mm -hmm. just now we're talking about certain things that people find hot buttons that, you know, now they want to identify. So, yeah, get, I, again, it's, it's, it's the way the world is. It's technology now. Get used to it and figure out a way f to use it to your advantage or at least so it's not a disadvantage. And avoid it. When, uh, when Amazon and uh, Dropbox and 
Google and uh, and Microsoft and all these other companies started scanning the images that people are uploading for uh, for inappropriate or illegal content. I don't remember hearing this this big public backlash to those companies doing that. Did I just miss that? I don't, I don't remember it. It might have happened. And, yeah. But, but Jeff, I, I don't remember either. But you know what? I don't think anybody thought about it. And we've had this conversation here on this show and on other shows. The, the very same way that we, we all very innocently shared our contact lists with Facebook and other social places, because yeah, you know, I'm on, I'm on platform X and I want to talk to Jeff on platform X. So I want platform X to know that he's in my contacts and we didn't understand what we were giving away mm -hmm. or what uses that could be put to. So I, I don't think there was that backlash. I think people saw storage, convenience, access, Great, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I had that discussion on Twitter about uh, what was it, Clubhouse, I think. Who, like, I mean, like mm. many other apps, is uploading the photos. I think uh, the photos, uh, the phone numbers. And wasn't there even a leak recently? I think I think that was what happened. Yeah, but, uh, uh, I leak in air quotes. Right. I mean, it was just phone numbers, like nothing else, just phone numbers. But the reality in this case was there was no other way to do it. If you want to identify someone in someone else's contacts that he is connected to you, then the only way to do that is to, to upload all your phone numbers. They were yeah. smart enough to not connect it to anything else. So that was the good part. And phone numbers are e like easy to guess. So Yeah, when uh, Clubhouse uh, hit the point uh, during the setup where it wanted to upload my contacts, uh, I told it no because I just <laughs> always tell every service no. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and of course it kept pushing me, Hey, you know, if you want to be able to, to really take advantage of clubhouse, you need to give us this. And yeah. I said, no. And eventually it, uh, it, it let me through the process without uploading my con my contacts to the best of my knowledge. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, and what I found is that, uh, is that it's difficult to uh, to find uh, discoverability on Clubhouse is very hobbled if they don't have your yeah. entire address book. Yeah, as I said, and, and in this case, they don't upload the address book. They literally just upload the phone numbers. So all the, as I said, that was a pretty smart decision, but I was even questioning that. And like, I was like told on Twitter and I thought about it and it's true. There is simply no way to to improve that security wise because anything you do can be reversed because phone numbers are easy to guess. Mm -hmm. So the phone number without any other context is useless. Yeah, I still didn't do it. Yeah. And and I didn't do it, but <laughs> they somehow were able to send invites to my friends that were in my address book. So I got mm -hmm. very fed up with that and deleted my account. So <laughs> okay, I haven't used Clubhouse since. So. Yeah. And, and I never signed up for Clubhouse for this very reason, that yeah. you know there were too many stories coming out that seemed to be just coincidentally, gee, right. I, 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 they're connecting me with somebody and they really should know that I know that person. How do they know that? And you know the obvious conclusion is that they probably took your contacts, whether you allowed it or not. So yeah. I mean, on an iPhone, you would do that that way because they wouldn't have access to it that way. That is yeah, that mine, is one yeah. of the big features, like an iOS. Right. It, it but box uh, access. I may not have realized it, but then when it got to that point, like Jeff did with uh, mm -hmm. stopping the contacts, uh, I said no, and mm -hmm. they sent invites to friends anyway because I got mm -hmm. like kind of bothered. And one of my coworkers said, "Hey, you do this clubhouse?" And like, wow, what do you mean? You sent me an invite. Oh no, I didn't do that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, despite the. Uh, the whole uh, contact issue that they have, um, I found in general Clubhouse is uh, uh, kind of a 
Boy. <laughs> yeah, I, I was trying to think but of a way to say it that would save you clean. from having to edit. <laughs> um, but, but, by the way, David. Yeah, <laughs> David. It's, it's a big crap storm. Yeah. It, what most likely happened, sorry, David, what most likely happened in your case was they had your phone number in their contacts and Clubhouse knew that. Yeah, must have been. So hmm. that's probably it. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 There's always two sides. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still, so, yeah, I don't like, their, I don't like that policy. So it, it's yeah. uh, I, I said, I, echo chamber. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. I, I can understand, like, from a technical perspective, I could totally understand it, why they did it that way, and it made sense. And they did it in the best way possible. There, there was simply wasn't any other way to, to do it properly. So, yeah. Doesn't mean it's good. Nope. All right. Well, let's talk about something a little more uh, lighthearted. And uh, let's talk about the uh, the Apple Store redesign on their web page. Ooh. 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 Finally. Um, OK, so earlier this week, the uh, the Apple Store went offline because Apple still is doing their own uh, uh, in-house coded uh, system instead of using a, a proper CMS. Um, so the website went down. When it came back up, the there was now a uh, a tab on the homepage for the store because holy crap, why did they ever take that away in the first place? <laughs> and um, and then the landing page for the store was redesigned. Also, the the new uh, keyboard of Touch ID was available as a standalone product. Um, but hey. Uh, site redesign. So, what do you think? People got super super excited when they, the uh, when the website went down because they were thinking there's some <laughs> new products coming out. Um, but I I like the design. I think it's nice. But and we talked about this yesterday. I, I think this uh, it is designed almost like the, for touch screen because you have to swipe with your mouse or your or your or your trackpad to to move across the different the different items to look at stuff. Uh, whereas before you could just click. I, it doesn't bother me. But you can still click. And you there's can still yeah. a little there's not still a little like arrow thingy that you can click. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. and but, uh, my take on it, which uh, which I shared on in touch with iOS last night, was I think it looks pretty, but it's a horrible design. Absolutely horrible. Because yeah. if it would if 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 they designed it properly for a desktop device, which is mm -hmm. what this is for, then it would be optimized for for vertical scrolling, but it's designed for horizontal scrolling, which works better when you're doing a touch interface because it's natural to swipe left and right, and uh, and this is this is an interface that is designed for for a touch, not uh, not for using a mouse pointer. Um, which I mean, if you think about it probably is not not too bad i mean how many people I, i'm pretty sure a lot of people on on ipads or iphones go to the apple store on the website not knowing that there's an app i bet that's, that's true but those majority. people were already getting a a uh, a touch interface yeah ish ish i, I mean i ish. i agree with you the divine is not the design is not great i mean I don't have a pro I, it, it, it's a combination of horizontal and vertical and I'm okay with that and I think overall it looks good and it's like clearly structured. It, it does look My big good. my big problem with it is there is a massive like white space on the left hand side. That is oh yeah completely unused. Yep, that really annoys yeah. me. For no reason whatsoever because on the right hand side it scrolls to the right. So why not use the full screen? Like why not use the full width of the window? Right. Yeah. That makes no sense. Good point. Good point. Yep. So, yep. I didn't even thought I about that. But. That I don't get. I'm like, I mean, you're scrolling to the right anyway. So why like, just make it wider? Yeah. Just like a big blank bar on the left. Yeah. Yep. For, for nothing. Like <laughs> it even gets like when you when you like resize it, it even gets back bigger. I, I, I like I like the design. I like the, the fact that it's clean, it's bright, you know, it's very appealing. I mean, first of all, Jeff, I'm with you. Why do they ever take the store tab away? That made no sense. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, 
there's so many messages they're trying to deliver on this site. And this seems to be a tendency right now with, with so many websites that I, I don't feel like the navigation and the access to the content is as easy as it could be. Now, this is a store site and Apple has a kind of a limited categorization of their products, which is definitely a good thing. But if I want to go and try to find a cable, let's say, for my iPhone to charge it, it becomes yeah. a little more, just a little more problematic. Not impossible, but a little more problematic. And while a, a CNN news style site with just a lot of text links is probably not the answer, I, I'm not smart enough mm -hmm. to know what it is, but I know I'm, I'm fighting this battle in, in a couple of different projects, trying to figure out how to make things easy to find, easy to use with the hierarchical menu structure of if, if you if you had a web a, a map of the website you know i feel like okay here iphone great click iphone now i drop down to you know the the multiple models of iphone click one of those mm -hmm. models and now i can see what the colors and the the memory configurations and prices are yeah that's multiple clicks but it feels like i can get to where i want to go faster and easier and better as opposed to trying to put it all right up here up front. Mm -hmm. And, and that's the uh, other, I mean, I, I like it, but it, I, I recognize it has challenges that, yeah. you know, seem to be epidemic right now in modern versions of the web and modern versions of CMSs. Yeah, I think that's, that's, you're right. That's the other problem. There's just too much. I mean, if you, if you open the site and you look at it, there's just too much going on. The navigation almost disappears. Because there's so much else, like there's colors everywhere, and there's like bold text, and like and and you, you almost lose that there is actually a way to go to like a special a certain device. I think I'm guessing that's on purpose, but I'm not sure that makes sense. Well, I'm sure whatever they're doing is on purpose, and and they have a reason for it. Um, whether or not it's effective, well. If, if we see a radical change in the in the site design in a few weeks, we know it wasn't effective. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, but you know, when you look at the the other end of that spectrum, you have sites like Amazon, where it's it is just product chaos all the time, <laughs> yes. everywhere, and mm -hmm. uh, and yet they they sell an insane amount of stuff every single day. So, Jeff, you're you're a design guy, so I'm I'm really curious. Is is this too much white space? It's way too much white space. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good. Dave pointing out the bar on the left. Um, the there that that's wasted space, and it looks weird. And that, you know, I mean, there's no point for that. And and then when uh, I don't remember if it was Dave or Patrice said when you resize your window that uh, <laughs> that white space it gets bigger yeah. so it's wasting even more space yeah i said i mean i i'm by no means a, a ux designer but i know i've worked with a lot of them and i know some principles and and honestly this i said it's it's just pulling focus everywhere it's complete chaos i mean as you when you when you said uh, amazon amazon is actually i mean it has a lot of white space also too much in my opinion but it's what it services is relatively clear like you like there's a categories there's like certain things they want to promote but it's limited and mm -hmm. i don't get that here i said there's like i don't know how many it feels like 500 different colors used here because every product has then four five ten different colors mm -hmm. yeah it um uh, but then the rest of the Apple Store website, as far as I can tell, is unchanged. So it's only the landing page for the store mm -hmm. that they, they made any changes to. Um, still, no, I that's guess... that's not true. If you, if you, for example, go onto the Buy Mac page, that has also the new design. It's not the old design where you had the, like, I don't know, to, don't know how to explain it. Basically, the, the model side by side and, and underneath each other and whatever. It has changed. I'm going to look right now. 
Oh, yeah, you're just, right. You're right. Yeah. It's it has changed. I was thinking when you went to the particular model and like in the case like a MacBook yeah. Air, that does look the same that it used to be. Oh yeah, you're right. Like when you go another level, then then you're back at the same thing. Okay. Right. Yeah. Well, there you go. But hey, again, at least there's a store tab again. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, Jeff, there's there's um, there's a word that I've been running into in the last two weeks about a lot of different things, and that's friction. And I feel like you know that was a there was a friction point here. Trying, okay, I'm interested in a new MacBook Pro. So, and, and I click it. Great. And if I miss that little tab up that says buy now or buy here or whatever it did say, you know, then I've, what do I do with it? How do I get to it? Now, store, no question. I know what I'm there for. And I, I, I like that. that. That cuts down on the friction. Yep. Uh, now, I'm wondering if uh, part of the reason behind creating that friction in the first place was wanting to drive people to the Apple Store app on, on mobile devices. Mm, I uh, not too sure. I think the thinking was more that they wanted to drive people to the like to the device pages that they have that are beautiful. Like uh, every like the Mac page is beautiful, and I like every page is special design and everything. And they were hoping people would simply go, "Oh, I want a Mac. Click on the Mac and get the beautiful Mac sites." And then then they would select the Mac and then click buy. And what they realize is that a lot of people already know what they want to buy, and it's a lot of friction to go through all those pages just to get to the buy button. Yeah, actually, that does make sense. It, yeah, it, I mean, it, it just goes to show you right here, just this little discussion, how difficult it is because you're trying to create a page for different audiences. <laughs> yeah, the audience that doesn't know and they're, they're not sure or the audience that knows what they want and now has to decide on specifications. Yeah, it's, it's not an admirable challenge. No. <laughs> um, all right. So how about one more story before we get on to, uh, to sponsors and cool things? And uh, uh, let's talk about how crappy the HomePod is doing in, uh, in the smart speaker space. Um, there, there's a... Uh, study out from uh, uh, consumer research intelligence partners and uh, they're showing that um, that the Amazon uh, echo product line has the lion's share of the smart speaker market then you have Google and um, uh, and then at the the very bottom of the list with uh, a, 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 an inconsequential, percentage <laughs> of the smart speaker space is all of HomePod. Yeah, I mean, I'm not so sure that this is a very reasonable way of approaching it. I mean, you're comparing you're comparing devices that Amazon frequently gives away or sells for basically nothing with like higher priced yeah. devices. And, and that's, I mean, a very much skewed like viewpoint. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I also have to say, Honestly, my my personal opinion, Apple has been asleep in the speaker market because they put like they put out the HomePod and then didn't do much with it. Like they added like a feature here, a feature there, but mostly did nothing with it. And then they had the HomePod Mini, and was there any big change this year in the HomePod Mini? I don't think so. Uh -uh. Like uh, no, minor, we're, minor we're still on little the OG HomePod things. Mini. Yeah, I mean, not even talking hardware, software. Like, there's massive potential in the software. There's so many things they could be doing. And I think other than using it as a relay for Siri on other devices, I don't remember much. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. that's the big new thing coming to HomePod yeah. Mini this fall. Yeah. yeah, it's like big. I'm like, okay, like, what are we doing? Yeah, that just that, doesn't that, seem that, exciting. No. Does this seem like, exciting? And then... Um, a very high priced home pod when it came and hit the market, you know, not a lot of people were in the budget to be able to buy those. Um, and then they, then they, and they discontinue it. So that kind of put things in the perspective of people. Okay. You know, you're, you're, you're abandoning all these people, including myself and many, I'm sure all of us here that have mm -hmm. the home pods. 
the home pod the full size home pod and i'm hoping they continue to support it for the next few years i mean of course it's a technology item i don't expect it to be forever um but then the home pod mini comes out and here you go it's it was cool at the time i'm sure i know a lot of people are buying it, it was it really reasonably priced but like you said, you're right. I mean, they haven't really done much of anything with 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 the HomePod uh, in mm-hmm. general. I, I, it's a, it's kind of a shame. There, there's so much software potential. I mean, look at what yeah. the Echo does. Look at what the the Google device does. I mean, there, there's so many other things that both those devices do um, that the HomePod doesn't. Yeah, I mean, I was just thinking about that yesterday. Um, I was listening to podcasts, and I I like Castro, and it's a pain. I mean, really a pain to use Castro <laughs> with with uh, with a HomePod. I yeah. mean, pain in air quotes it's still not super difficult like you just use airplay but there's basically no control there's nothing like it it's basically i need my phone to do anything with it i mean i think it, i can do play pause with siri and that's about it. yeah i can't even tell it hey play this podcast from i uh, play my next podcast from castro because then it's going to use the podcast app right it's like it's very so and, and, and amazon has had skills for i don't know how long like years 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 Yes. Yeah. I mean, I've had an Amazon Many Echo years. since since it came out, and yeah, yeah, it's th- those skills are 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 cool. I mean, they're they're fun yeah. to to set up, and you know, there's there's all kinds of different skills you can do, and and yeah, Apple hasn't done any of that stuff. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, oh, Siri uh, has improved, yes, but that's about it. Yeah. Well, th- that that to me, Patrice, is is what I was going to say. Siri is definitely improving, and Apple is not letting mm-hmm. people know how much in- it's improving. And I think that that's a failure of communication because I, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I use this example, and this has been months ago, when there was a particular historical figure that I wanted to know more about. And I ask Alexa and the, the A-Lady, sorry, folks, I, I ask the A-Lady <laughs> and it gave it me something. Off. Then I ask Siri and it gave me as much or more. And a lot of it was overlap, but that's fine. you know. But I had expected Siri to say, um, yeah, you know, well, here I can show you phone, right? Or I can show you something on the web, but instead it gave me what I wanted. So I think there's that. I, Patrice, I agree with you 100% on the pricing piece. Um, I, I think that that definitely skews this. But I'm really intrigued by what both of you said about skills, because I I, I turned off. I think I sent it to my black hole. Um, you know that constant from email of we have new skills because they were skills that were not doing anything for me. And so I wanna know what skills you two have found that were useful and not just completely frivolous that are worth my time to set up and pay attention to. I'll tell you the the one I use a lot is I I use the uh, Odyssey app. That's the radio, well, formerly radio.com. And you had to have a skill available. And boy, it was a pain when they switched because they, Convert, you know, it's a mass conversion between radio.com and uh, Odyssey. Um, and the station I listen to all the time, I, you know, I say, Hey, uh, Hey, I want to listen to the station, stop working or it just wouldn't work. Right. So it took them time to, to finally fix it. But that's just in one example of, of a few others that I would do that I would have as far as skills that it, it, it really does a good job of being able to get things working. I use it with TuneIn and I use it with uh, iHeartRadio and you know, mostly media is the type stuff, but there's there's thousands of skills. If you go into that catalog, it's crazy. And there's a lot of silly stuff by all means, but I mean, even even they have like, a, if you want to have the, the thunderstorm sounds and such that to help go to sleep and that kind of stuff, they have all those kind of skills. Uh, but yeah, you should take another look. I mean, I, I, I find it interesting looking through the catalog of, of skills and what they have. I and mean, there might be something of interest to you. I don't know when the last time you've looked, but, uh, but those are just notably some of the things that I've been using it for. I mean, I, I have in my, I have one in my bathroom because, you know, I want to have to, I'm taking a shower. I want to be able to list some. So I say, Hey, hey lady, I want to listen to this and and it's there. So, I, I, and, and any other place in the house that I have, but, uh, I'm kind of, I, I'm a, I'm a mixed household because I do have some Google devices. I mean, I have all three because well, because I'm crazy, of course. <laughs> um, but um, but uh, uh, you know, I have a, I have a Google Home sitting in front of me here, and and you know, I use that from time to time. It's got a nice small screen. Sometimes I want to move a, a video I want to watch sitting next to me, uh, and uh, so I put it on there. And then of course the HomePods are here. So it, it really I think the skills are, are something you should look at. you should relook at. I mean, I think there are some some really uh, good ones that that make it valuable if you use the echo as much as uh, I do. 
Okay. I, I, I have the, the Amazon devices and yeah. I like them for what I use them for, but I just got burned out on, uh, you know, tell me a joke, play me a song, tell me a riddle, you know, tell me what yeah. color the sky well, there, is going to be tomorrow. There's, more, there's so many others. There's, there's, there's so many others. I mean, yeah. BTN has, BTN has one. Like we have the, the news show. That's a skill. Yeah. Like you can tell it to play the latest news show. Does that. Did you write uh, that? Uh, no, it, it wasn't me. I've maintained <laughs> it, but I haven't written it. Okay. It was camps, I think. Yeah. Okay. If, so uh, if you have smart home devices and you want to yeah. control those with echo. your echo, there are skills for all those things. And, uh, and actually some smart home devices won't have, uh, have home kit or S lady support. So, uh, you know, those are all relegated off to, to uh, the A lady for me. Like my, uh, my D bot uh, vacuum robot. I can, I can uh, uh, just tell the A lady to start cleaning the, the living room or whatever. And the robot will go do its thing. But yeah. the company that makes that, they never, um, they, they never uh, added in support for Apple products. Mm -hmm. uh, other than an app that you, that you can use on your phone. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I have the I, I have I have the Ekabi, uh, the smart mm -hmm. uh, thermostat, and that's a that that's a that's a Echo device too. So yes. I walk up to that and I want to say, hey, hey, lady, I want to listen to this, and it's sitting in my living room. I I got rid of it. I had I had Echo sitting on my uh, on on one of the side tables in my living room. I'm like, what do I need this for? I got this right here, and it actually sounds pretty good con you know, considering it's being a thermostat mounted to the wall. So, um, so uh, that itself was 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 another reason I kind of like to have mm -hmm. that because um, again that. The the Alchemy has limited home. But they, no, it does have home kit no, support. They it have does good home kit support. Like they, they do have good. good. Yeah, yeah they have both. So so yeah. I, it goes both ways. Um, but mm -hmm. you aren't going to get a smart speaker access with that mm -hmm. device. I have an example of that. But again, yeah, I think skills skills there have, have there are some yeah. uh, skills of value, and there's some there are some that are very dumb. Yeah. But mm -hmm. Bob Beach is saying, um, I wish the HomePod would play BBC Radio natively, like the Echo devices. Yeah, uh, because he can't be bothered airplaying it from the VPC Sounds app. He just uses Alexa, and that's exactly the point. Like people just right. are going where it's easier, and Alexa, in this case, much easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's so, that's a big gap. There. That's the big point of this article, and I think uh, Bob hit it right on the nail, uh, nail on the head here. That's that's that that's a reason why Apple has not done a good, very good job with the the, the device exactly. itself is is awesome, but it's just what content it provides it, is not. And the question, I mean, he asked the question, does Apple really care about this market? And I mean, I think they do because otherwise they would have never done the mini. Yeah. They would just said, okay, HomePod was a one-off thing. We're not doing that anymore. Done. Like, or just let it die. Like not talk about it even. Just let it die. They didn't do Well, that. just like, just like the iPod Hi-Fi, right? And then when they had yeah. that 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 failed mm -hmm. device that Steve mm -hmm. Jobs said that this is the most amazing thing in the world. I'm going to get rid of my home theater. Well, look what happened there. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and it's really surprising because of this home theater. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really surprising that that Apple, with all the focus on Apple Music and everything, I mean, it's yeah. it's one of those things. It's almost like they just they can't. It's in their DNA, but they can't quite figure it out. Like the the iPod Hi-Fi, um, you know, it, it's like it's, it was a great idea. It wasn't well executed. Definitely not followed up on. The HomePod, the the full size HomePod, was brilliant regardless of the pricing, but it really wasn't followed up on until the mini yeah. and the mini represents some compromises, but like you all, like we've been saying, you know, there's not a lot, been a lot of follow-up with that. And example of the Apple music, Apple music can be used on, on, on the echo. You, you, you could set it up as a skill and then it, it, it makes that, that's your default music, uh, music source, but along with everything else, then, you know, with Spotify and Amazon music and any other thing you want to set it to. So Apple's opened up that part of it because it, the Apple music is available on a lot of other uh, devices, but, uh, but not, not making it very easy. The, the irony for me is that, uh, that there are many times where it's actually much easier for me to get an echo to play uh, my Apple Music than a HomePod because uh, I'll, I'll say something, you know, like, uh, uh, hey, S lady, play 
um, you know, like some specific artist and it'll come back and, and say they're, they're, that's not available, uh, can't find that. Mm -hmm. Then I'll tell the echo the exact same thing. And, uh, and then you just add to the end on Apple Music so that it knows that's the service I wanna use. And it immediately starts playing exactly what I asked for. That's the element yeah. I really. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. All right. <laughs> so um, I guess uh, what we've established is Apple really has a lot of work to do. They do. In the smart speaker space. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, which is frustrating because, the, I mean, they're making good products. They just need to pull it all together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Hey, this show and all the others is sponsored by TSO Hosts, which is absolutely awesome because if they weren't, if TSO Hosts wasn't here for us, that means we wouldn't be here for you. So uh, they're giving us the bandwidth we need to, uh, to uh, crank out quality products uh, or shows to you every single week and, uh, and, uh, and, and give me the opportunity to apologize live on the internet to you and on a regular basis, you and I'm so sorry. Um, and, but they also give us that uh, storage space we need so that you can go back and watch or listen to shows at your convenience if, if you don't have the opportunity to tune in live. So uh, uh, we, we're really happy that they're here for us. And, uh, and when we say we wouldn't be here without them, that is not hyperbole. We literally would not be here without them. So we really appreciate TSO hosts and uh, they will give you, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, some discounts for being a BTN fan. If you need web hosting or if you need to have uh, or need to buy a new domain, uh, just go to their website and you can use the discount code BTN20 to get a, a discount on your purchases. So thanks for doing that. That's actually awesome. Uh, but what they'd like from us is to go and hit social media give them a shout out and thank them for, for sponsoring the British tech network, because, uh, because, you know, we, we live in, in, uh, in pretty stressful times. So a little bit of validation every now and then to feel good about ourselves is, is a good thing. So help TSO hosts feel good about themselves. And uh, since you're doing something nice, you'll feel good about you which it's just a win for everyone. So go do that. Uh, I'm in Max is also our sponsor and uh, uh, they do so much awesome work to fix your Apple gear that uh, clearly they're, they're crazy busy doing that because Callum isn't here with us today. Uh, I, I'm assuming he is locked away in his uh, little uh, little Callum room where he does <laughs> his Callum magic, where he has his Callum touch to fix your Apple kit for you. The cloth. Except for the cloth parts. <laughs> yeah, yes, you're on your own for that. Um, no, no, he's, he, he's, that's probably what he's working on right now. He's trying to get over his cloth phobia. So, <laughs> so that, that he can fix even more <laughs> for us. And there, you know, there, there, there are several people that are part of I'm in Max and, they, and they're all fantastic. But Callum is, uh, is like our personal I'm in Max because he's on the <laughs> show quite regularly. Um, I, I, I love the idea of a Callum room. I just, I just <laughs> like that. Too. I know. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Me too. Callum room. Yeah, I like that. Everybody should have one. <laughs> Everyone should. <laughs> yeah. all, all of your Apple gear would work so much better if mm -hmm. you had a Callum room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, they'll take and fix just the part that's that's screwed up on your Apple device instead of like just pitching the entire logic board and putting a new one in, which is mm -hmm. great because that means you get your device back, but it also means that there's less waste going into landfills. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, they'll also sell you Apple gear if you need that or lease it if, uh, if, if that's the route that's best for you. And uh, they're just absolutely awesome people. So uh, uh, take your Apple gear to I'm in Max to get it fixed and mention British Tech Network so that they'll give you a discount. And, uh, and make sure that they know that you want your gear fixed in the Callum room. 
Uh, thank you to TSO Host. Thank you to I'm and Max for being our sponsors. And now I'm going to hit you up for money uh, because the Daily Show needs some cash to keep going. The, the cash reserve for that show is getting low. So, uh, so head over to the British Tech Network website and, uh, and give some money to the show because uh, that, that's the show that we have to pay to make happen. And without money, that means it won't be happening. And uh, it's a really cool show. So go, go give money and, uh, and keep the daily show running. All right. Uh, and uh, since I have clearly decided that I'm just not going to ever bother learning the, uh, the links <laughs> for the chat room and stuff, Patrice, I am just simply going to lean on you for that. Well, um, that is really easy. Take your browser of choice, whatever it is. Um, I mentioned yesterday, I don't know, but Netscape 1 might still work. I haven't tried it. <laughs> I would say take a modern browser of choice. Uh, point it over to britishtechnetwork.com forward slash chat and then navigate to the 6th of August 2021. That's right, that's the year, yeah, 2021. And um, you will find everything we've talked about, all the awesome stuff in the chat room and all our links. Awesome. Th thank you for, for, well, for putting up with me <laughs> because I just no lean on you every single week for that. Uh, uh, all right. So uh, it's time for the cool things. And Patrice, let's start with you. Yeah, so my cool thing is something I could not find the exact same product in other stores, but it's the general thing. Those are NFC stickers. Um, the ones I put in at least are available in the US and UK. These ones here I just couldn't find anywhere else other than in Germany. Um, but the cool thing about this NFC stickers is that you can combine them with shortcuts on the iPhone, and that allows you to trigger whatever shortcut you want. So I, that was something, I mean, I've been creating shortcuts for a lot of things, but I wanted an easy way to trigger them, especially in certain situations. Like I'm sitting here podcasting. I just want to, like I've set up a podcast uh, focus mode, but I don't want to go into my iPhone and then trigger it by hand and all that. I just want like to tap my phone somewhere or put my phone somewhere and it just does it. And that's, that's where those things come in. Um, I, I got the color coded ones. There are like a million gazillion white ones. So like just buy doesn't probably doesn't matter which ones you get. Um, they all kind of work the same, um, and combine that with an automation and, and, and shortcuts, and you can trigger whatever scenes, whatever shortcut, whatever whatever you want really. And that's that's my cool thing. Also shortcuts, but and cut. that's very cool. Yeah. By the way, this one is my podcast one. I haven't stuck it anywhere yet because if you put it on metal, it doesn't work, obviously. So <laughs> I have to find a place for it. Right. Yeah. Um, and now, now you have uh, reminded me that the envelope full of NFC stickers that I have needs to come out of the drawer because mm -hmm. I got it specifically to do exactly what you're doing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They're awesome. awesome. Having so much fun with that. All right, Dave, what's your cool thing? My cool thing is this awesome monitor I just got a week ago. It's the 32-inch uh, Samsung uh, UHC. It's a 4K and HD monitor, um, 32 inches. It's just massive. I've never owned a large screen until till now. Um, the the uh, the color is just uh, just sharp, crisp. It's fitting on my desk nicely. I'm using it right now, looking at you guys right now, and it's nice to be able to put all kinds of windows scattered everywhere and then nothing, nothing's blocked. So I'm pr pretty happy with that. A um, couple of the uh, unique things is, uh, again, is the wide widescreen UHD, but it, uh, it has a lot of upscaling, 4K for gaming. Um, but one thing I really like is the multitasking part of it. It does a picture by picture. So whereas I have two, I have my Mac mini and a, and a MacBook Pro plugged into the two individual HDMI ports, I put it in this picture by picture mode and I have access to both computers in a half screen so I can do multitasking. Um, 
I even uh, we even talked about it yesterday. I, I thought that maybe this would be a good idea when we can I can have an iPad on one of the, the sources and the and the Mac on the other, and I can probably use the the handoff mode or what was it called the new mode that's going to be in Monterey um, that I could drag things between the two screens that's sitting right on this uh, 32 inch screen. But uh, really really sharp picture. And I, I'm I'm really impressed with it. Uh, it's not too terribly expensive for a 32 inch 3345 349 US. And uh, yeah, I think it's. Uh, it, it's really cool. The bezel's not bad. I don't doesn't bother me too much, and um, uh, I'm glad to, I'm glad I have it. I, I upgraded it from a from a th uh, old uh, Apple Thunderbolt 27 inch, so uh, quite a difference. Awesome. All right. So uh, the first link I'm dropping into the chat, um, I'm putting that there specifically for you, Chuck. This was my cool thing yesterday on the big show, and it's a set of speaker stands. And, uh, and I'm dropping it there for you because, uh, because you have the Audio Engine A5s on your desk behind you, and I have Audio Engine A5s on these speaker stands, and it freed up so much space on my desk. Um, so, you know, I, I guess what I'm saying is I felt like um, I needed to spend a little money for you. So uh, you're welcome. Yeah, thanks. Pretty awesome. But my my actual pick today is iAmazing because they rolled out a new update this week that adds in a, a, a way to check your iPhone or iPad for the Pegasus malware. And, uh, and now granted, none of us have Pegasus on our devices. But the fact that uh, they did an update where they, they were able to very quickly roll that feature in uh, makes a tool that's already useful even more so. And the, um, the Pegasus checker part is available in the free version of iAmazing as well. So uh, now, now you can do all of your backups the way you really want and manage your your data on your iPhones and iPads the way you really want and check for, for Pegasus. And I'm betting that uh, uh, this is just the start and they, and I, I'm, I have no insider information, I'm just speculating, that they're going to add in the ability to check for other malware threats as those come up too. All right. Um, so um, thank you to all three of you for being here today and um and patrice you forgot his pick oh wait yeah, exactly. That's funny. <laughs> I, wait chuck you're still you skipped him. <laughs> i'm sorry you, you were too busy spending my money to allow me to do a pick yeah, well, yeah i guess so all right in my defense i have not had my tea yet today oh okay <laughs> um, and, and also, Chuck, it's so great to have you on the show today. Glad you could join us. Um, yeah. Okay. Chuck, what do you have? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So David just gushed about his monitor. And, and my pick was inspired by a conversation that we had earlier this week on Mac Voices Live. Those shows will be out next week. But we talked about Dave's monitor Jeff's monitor, um, Jim Ray's monitor, and not only big monitors, but multiple monitors. That pushed me back to go and relook at something that I've been using in a very limited, now I find out, limited capacity. And that's a, a utility for many tricks called Moom. This lets you manage your windows on any size monitor, on multiple monitors, in ways that I find I've been doing, but I've been doing by hand. And now I'm starting to examine some of the advanced capabilities of Moom, and I'm loving it. Um, just in the last week, I mean, I've, I'm not going to tell you I've changed exactly how I work with, with multiple windows in multiple monitors, but it has definitely caused me to re-examine it and do some shortcuts and things, not capital S shortcuts, but um, Moom capabilities, Moom things that let you arrange your, your windows. So if you have big monitors or small monitors, and you want to do a little better management of your windows, check out Moom and be sure to, you know, dig a little bit deeper than just the, the, the basics, because I've been using the basics and the basics are phenomenal, but 
the the advanced things that uh, the the other capabilities it may take you a little while to set up it may take you a little while to figure out exactly how you want to use it but i think you will find it very very rewarding boom is very cool spent ten dollars for me <laughs> Well, Jeff spent 99 for me, so I think. So, <laughs> I, I really like those speaker stands. Yeah, they look they look cool. I, I love the speaker stands I got from um, from Audio Engine, but you're right, they do take up desktop space, so I may have to look into these. Awesome. Okay. Well, now, now that uh, we've gone through everyone's pick, including our surprise special guest, Chuck Joyner. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, Chuck. Uh, ah, no problem. Uh, thanks to all three of you, including Chuck, for being here today. Um, I, I'm, I'm so glad you're able to just hop in at the end and, and just, it, it's like you were here the whole time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so thank you to all three of you for being here. You're absolutely awesome. Patrice, where can people find you? Well, every week here on the Mac show every Friday, on the big show every Thursday with also Jeff. So we see each other twice a week, which is twice as awesome. So yes, it that. is. Um, you can find everything I'm doing, all the projects and social media links. And if you want to buy me coffee and all of that on thepatrice.com. Uh, just easier as brandonmore.net where it redirects to. And um, yeah, my podcast is the Foodie Flashback at foodieflashback.com. Why I talk to awesome people like Chuck, like David, and like Jeff about food and just everything that goes with that. Awesome, and uh, and thank you for being the European on the show today, so <laughs> yes. that uh, it's it's not just the American Tech Network yes. this week. It's the American Austrian Tech Network today. That's right. <laughs> yep, uh, Dave. Where can people find you? Find me at In Touch with iOS, at InTouchWithIOS.com. Got a new episode coming out with Jeff this week, and uh, always have a blast with him. And I'm also here in the Mac show. I'm on Mac Voices Live on Tuesday nights, uh, hanging out with um, many of you all and talking about kinds of fun things. Uh, my YouTube page is uh, YouTube.com slash DaveG65, and Twitter. You can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. And uh, Chuck, where can people find you? You can find me over at macvoices.com. That's where you get to see all the people I talk to. Uh, you can find me Tuesday nights, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, whatever time it is, wherever you are, uh, on YouTube at Mac Voices TV. We do a live show there. and would love to have you join in the chat. And on the socials, uh, pretty much all of them, I'm at Chuck Joyner. Thanks, Jeff. A lot of fun as always. It's a blast. So thanks. All right, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram. I am Jay Gamut, both places. Uh, YouTube.com slash Jay Gamut for my how-to and uh, review videos. And um, most Tuesdays on Mac Voices Live. This week on In Touch with iOS. Thursdays on The Big Show. Fridays on The Mac Show. And, uh, and other shows along the way, too. I kind of get around. Um, so thanks again to, to the three of you for being here with me today. And uh, I presume Ewan will be back next week because I won't. Um, I, I'm gone uh, all next week. So I won't be on anyone's show, which is going to be kind of weird. Um, and uh, thanks to all of you that are, that are watching right now and, uh, and are in the chat room. All of you absolutely rock. And uh, thanks to everyone that that uh, is watching or listening to the recordings later on. Love every one of you too. It's great to have everyone in as part of this. Just so much fun. So thanks again. Everyone have an awesome weekend and we'll see you again next week. <laughs>